Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and this will be part one of a two-part video for the TBM 850 tutorial series. Stick around. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining us on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future releases that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. All right, you guys, so once again, we are gonna be doing part one of the Overkill uh, TBM 850's tutorial guide for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And the idea behind what we're doing today is just more or less going through the initial startup process all the way through creating the flight plan. And then in the next video, we will go through um, the takeoff, cruise, and landing and shutdown. But as you guys can see here, the guide has come a very long way. It's just about wrapped up here, guys. So I want to make sure that we start the video series now so it's ready upon release when the guide is ready. So let's get started. All right, you guys, so as we get into the cockpit, there is an issue that I did discover with the TBM 850 that was actually causing me some problems and caused a little bit of delay in creating the guide. Um, I still don't know which one it is, but I'm gonna give you guys a scenario. If you are trying to use the GNS 530 and you're trying to use the working title GNS 530, and you're finding that no matter what you do, it's only using the default GNS 530, but yet the working title GNS 530 works on every other aircraft, for example, the Comanche, what it is is there is something, and I have not been able to ascertain what it is yet, but it is a mod in the community folder. Last night, uh, I finally tracked it down uh, to at least the source of the problem, um, I renamed my community folder, installed only the TBM. If you guys will see, you notice the handlebars back and most of my mods are pretty much all of my mods are gone. Um, and, uh, ever since then the working title GNS 530 works just fine. Um, and that is a big one for this particular tutorial guide that you guys are going to want. So I want you guys to be aware of that and what's going on here. Um, as far as the TBM 850 tutorial guide, the PDF guide that you guys just saw on the screen, as always, folks, it has absolutely everything you need within sight of it to complete the guide. Also gives you the recommendations of installing the TBM or the, excuse me, the GNS 530 from working title uh, from the Microsoft Marketplace and then any other steps that are required in order to repeat the guide step by step. But if you want to fly the exact same flight under the exact same parameters, all of those exist within the guide, including a full copy of the Simbri flight plan with the detailed route included. So everything you need is in the guide. The guide will be releasing within the next 48 hours. It's a little delayed than why I initially planned. And again, that had to do with me trying to track down why I couldn't use the GNS 530 to its full functionality. Now, many of you may be asking, why am I using the 530 over the GTN 750? My purpose of that is because everybody has the GNS 530, even if it's just the default 530, but everyone has access to the working title GNS 530 completely free. All you have to do is go again, go to the marketplace and it's there. It is a free download and updates the GNS 530. Uh, the GTN 750s, whether it's the PMS 50 or the uh, TDS, are both purchased. Now there is a freeware PMS 50 GTN uh, 750, but um, I wanted to go with something that was readily available in the sim. Later releases of the guide will include the GTN 750 avionics and how to fly the aircraft using it as well. Obviously, and in, in, in all said and done, honestly, uh, the GTN 750 is significantly easier to use than, than the GNS 530. The GNS 530 is also the more complex of the two as far as being user friendly, not necessarily feature, obviously the GTN 750 is far, far more advanced than the 530 is. Um, but the 530 is a bit more cumbersome to navigate and work around, I guess is, is the way I should have said that. So that is, uh, everything for the heads up here, guys, let's, we're going to get the aircraft fueled. We're going to get it weighted. Uh, and then we're going to walk through the process. Now, exterior inspection, I have left out of the guide cause that's sort of a, um, it, nothing is particularly modeled. Now you can open the engine cowlings, you can open the doors, the luggage doors, the passenger doors. And we're going to be talking about the doors here in a minute. Um, but you can't like move the ailerons. You can't move the flaps or, or the, the trim uh, surfaces, anything like that. So 
Um, I've left the in external inspection out of it. Um, and the only thing that we will be referencing is the necessity to sometimes open or close the doors. So uh, I just wanted you guys to have that heads up as well. Let's go ahead and get started with the checklist. All right, so let the games begin. We're going to start out by loading the aircraft here. <clears throat> so fuel we're going to set at 55%, which takes us to 1,071 pounds of fuel. Uh, the sim brief guide requested 1,068. Um, whenever it's that close, guys, just round to your nearest number, but be above what it asks, not below. Uh, payload, we're going to go to 56%. And that should have put us 870. Again, Simbrief is asking for 871. So that was perfectly fine. Uh, CG, obviously, just make sure it's within the limits and the aircraft is equally balanced. So we're good to go there. Let's start working through our checklist. So we've just weighted the aircraft. Cockpit tour you guys can enjoy if you pick up the guide. So let's begin. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, so we're going to start with the cockpit preparation. We're going to come up. I'm going to be working through this pretty quick here, guys, so just try to stay with me. We're going to do in the crash bar up, generator to main. Did I actually bring that up? Yep, I did. Okay, I didn't see it move. Okay. Uh, starter remains in the off position. Ignition can go to either auto or off. We'll leave it off for now. Exterior lights are all off. Gyro systems are all off. The emergency lights, let's go ahead and give them a test. So to test the emergency lights, we're going to roll the emergency light knob forward. Notice the lights come on. There's also another one up here. And there should be a few in the cabin if memory serves. Um, but we're not worried about those. We're going to roll them back down. Perfect. And circuit breakers. Now, we always mention the circuit breakers in just about every checklist that we ever do. In this one, you actually want to double check these, especially if you have failures turned on. Um, now, the guide does go in how to navigate failures and options that are available on the MFD. I will show them to you guys briefly here in just a second. But all of these circuit breakers are modeled and failure of said circuit breakers are modeled and one being pulled can be modeled. So you do want to make sure that each and every flight, if you have um, failures turned on, that you check your circuit breakers because they could absolutely stump you if you don't. Okay, and then we talked very briefly that we would take a look at how to see the failures. Basically, if you just take your weather radar here and you go to the nav mode, and we'll give it a second, it's got a power on. And here, you can repair the engine here, you can refill your oxygen, which we'll talk about later, and then reset all failures. Now, these are just the basic options here that I want to show you guys real quick. If you do run into any kind of failures that you need to adjust, like a hot start or something like that that damages the engine. Let's go ahead and set that back off and continue on with the checklist. <clears throat> all right, let's remove the yoke for a second. Let's get it out of our way. De-icing switches, you want to make sure they're all down. Same thing with the inertial separator. Gear handle should be down. Autopilot trims master down. Radio master or off, excuse me. <laughs> Radio master off. You want to make sure your bleed air is off. Air conditioning is off. Fan flow is off. Dump switch is guarded. Ram air, that's your ultimate static air source right here. You want to make sure that that is pushed in, uh, which it currently is. Fuel selector, you want to make sure it's set to manual, and the auxiliary boost pumps are currently off. Fuel selector, you would come down and select your fullest tank. They should be equally balanced right now, so we're not too worried about that. Emergency locator transmitter, or ELT, should be in the center position, which is the armed position. Now, if you do happen to question whether or not it's armed or on, very easy to identify in this aircraft. You will hear it loud and proud if you have it turned on. Okay, and then let's move on down. Manual override should be in the off position. That is the retracted or down position. Throttle should be at idle. Your um, propeller governor should be at max RPM and condition lever should be at cutoff. Flaps are currently retracted. While we are doing that, give me a second here before I end up needing it. I need to start SPAD. I forgot to do so. All right, let me just check that condition there or that prop lever. There we go, good, all right. It's bad as working. All right, continuing on down. Now we're going to do a quick systems check. So what we're going to do here is we're going to turn the batteries on. We're going to make sure that we are getting about 25 and a half volts. Your voltmeter or your volts available will drop the longer you leave this on. So this is not something you want to do and then walk away from the aircraft. Now amps, we want to make sure that they're in a charging condition. So we are charging. And let's see here. Where else do we want to go here? Oh, fuel quantity. Make sure we have plenty of fuel on board. 
advisory panel. You're going to test the enunciator. So we're going to go test one. There's two buses. So there's one. And then pointing arrow down, there's bus two. And you want to make sure that the oxygen light right here is extinguished, indicating that there's plenty of oxygen on board the aircraft. All right, internal lights at this point, you're going to set as required. You can find all your internal lightings here. On the environmental control panel, we're going to do a light fault test. So make sure the light illuminates, indicating there's a fault in the system. Flaps, we're going to drop them all the way down and make sure they actually come down. While the flaps are going down, we're going to check pitot 1, pitot 2 in the stall heater. So there's pitot 1, pitot 2. Make sure the lights extinguish, turn them back off. By now, our flaps are all the way down. We're good to go there. On the de-icing panel, once again, we're going to verify that all of these lights illuminate. So we're going to hit the light test button. There we go. Everything looks good. And that completes the electrical systems test. So we're going to come up and shut that electrical source off because we are going to be operating on the battery almost all the time. I never, in all my time of flying the TBM, I've never turned on the GPU um, so I, or set up a GPU. Um, even to the 930. All right. Now, this is going to be the before start checklist. If you were doing an external check, this is when you would do it. Now, let's talk about the doors for just a second here because this is where this sort of comes into play. If you guys look down here, you can see your internal cockpit temperature currently sitting at 83 degrees Fahrenheit, and you can cycle between Celsius and Fahrenheit by pressing the blue button here. So we're 83 degrees Fahrenheit. At about 92 or above, what you will get over here is a cabin temp high warning. Now, I'm gonna, this is gonna take a minute or two guys, so bear with me, but let's go ahead and open the pilot door. Let's unlock, which by the way, red indicates the door is unlocked. Green indicates that it's pressurized, or I should say latched and ready for pressurization. So let's open the door here for a second. And we're just gonna sit tight for just a minute here and you guys should see this temperature drop a little bit. All right, so it took about 60 seconds or so, but there you go, 82 degrees, and it will continue to drop until we get an outside air temperature or close to it. Um, now, we're not going to get OAT right now because we don't have the electrical power turned off, but opening the passenger door as well will increase the rate at which the cabin cools off. So if you are doing your pre-flights, your external inspections, you're setting up your flight plan on GPU, things like that, you don't want to have the door closed. I recommend opening them to keep the ventilation going inside the cockpit because remember the system's uh, overheat is modeled. It's not so much about it just being comfortable for you as the pilot. Obviously you're fine, you're sitting at your home and, and your air conditioning. It is simulated inside the, uh, the aircraft that the instruments and the systems are getting hot. Um, and so that's why you get the cabin temp high or low warning. And in inversely there, uh, if you get a low warning, obviously you need to generate some heat. So anyway, I wanted to point that out while we uh, talk about the doors because the next step is obviously making sure all of our doors are closed and sealed. So we're going to close our door here. And you can see there the latch went to green indicating the system's ready for pressurization safe if you have your engine cowlings open that's these guys right here there they go in case you guys haven't seen it's actually pretty slick whoa so it definitely looks cool but there isn't anything for us to go out and do it's just visual so you just click those and that'll close the cowlings uh let's see i'm trying to remember where the luggage door is. I don't remember where all of these are now. That's the engine cowling. That's the foot rest. Uh, I actually don't remember where the luggage door is, but not critical here. Can't remember if that light actually works. Anyway, the luggage door can be opened as well as obviously the rear passenger door. Oh, I remember the luggage door is here in case you guys want to see it. Hold on. The luggage door is these keys right here in the cup holder. You guys can tell how often I've been opening that. I've been working on the guide, so I have been skipping all the fun stuff. And then same thing with the door here. You push this to open the door or close the door. You can push this to release the door. Remember to press to unlock first, and then the footrest can come down as well. All right, let's get back over here. So 
beginning with the before start checklist here. So engine cowlings are closed, luggage door is closed, passenger doors are latched, pilot door is latched. And again, make sure that you verify that you've got green circles on all your latch points because the system overheat is modeled. Do not forget to uh, check your inside temperature and open the doors or close them if necessary. All right, let's continue on down. So now going through the before start checklist, we wanna make sure our parking brake is set oxygen. You want to make sure is sufficient enough for uh, flight. If not, that's where you come down to your MFD and hit refuel the oxygen bottle. Uh, we do turn the oxygen system on. This isn't so much about the oxygen being turned on right away. What this is, is engaging the system. The system knows when to actually um, induce oxygen. Okay. Um, anyway, let's keep on going here. Mic switch. You want to make sure this is in the normal position. Now, what this is, is in the event that you have to use the oxygen mask, and this is actually the pilot's oxygen mask, and over here, uh, where are you, is the first officer's oxygen mask. They actually reach across from each other because it's easier because of the cramped uh, cockpit. Anyway, so what this is, it determines which microphone is going to be used, whether it's the microphone that's plugged into the jack or the microphone that exists within inside the oxygen mask. So if for any reason we had to deploy the oxygen mask systems, we would open the guard and switch it down to the mask position. Okay. All right. So now let's move back up top here. Again, you want to make sure the starter is in the off position. Ignition is in auto or off position. You want to make sure our gear handle is down. A lot of these can be repetitive. Crash bar is up. Source selector should be in the off position. If you need to um, Get clearance for takeoff or do you all of your ATIS and clearance for your IFR clearance and your ATIS and all that information. You need to do that if you if that is required. So uh, clearance for startup, for example, if that's required, you can turn whatever your COM1 is on. Uh, so, for example, even if we set this side to the GNS 530, as long as the crash bar is up, notice we notice we don't have anything on the source selector, just the crash bar. And we flip on that radio master. Radio one will come on. Radio two stays off, but COM1 comes on. Okay, so then you can execute all of your, you know, again, your ADIS, your clearance, and your request to start up if that's required. We're not going to simulate that's required today, so we're going to keep on going. All right, so now we get into the fun stuff. So now we are going to turn on our battery. We're going to step on over. We're going to do the horn test. Horn test is valid. Check our advisory panel and make sure that the door light is extinguished. Okay, again, verifying we have fuel. We're going to set the fuel selection over to auto. Auxiliary boost pumps to the on position. There's that pressurization looking great. We're going to do an ITT test, okay? And we're going to make sure that the needle peaks all the way over, indicating that the gauge is operating properly, as obviously this is an incredibly critical piece of equipment here. There we go, bringing it on over. Perfect. All right, then we're going to come up top. And we're going to do our nav and our strobe lights, letting everyone know that the aircraft is getting ready to start. Now, let's go ahead and talk about what is going to happen here real quick. As we get into the engine start process, okay, at 13% NG, okay, we are going to then move the cutoff or condition lever over to low idle, at which point we will start getting uh, ITT. ITT, once we induce fuel, should not peak over a thousand degrees for more than five seconds, and it should not peak over uh, 870 degrees for more than 20 seconds. If either one of those two in, uh, situations occur, we will take the condition lever, move it back into cutoff, and shut the starter off. Okay? So, those are the two big things that we're going to monitor for. At 50% NG and everything's stable, we will then move the uh, cutoff lever over into high idle and shut the starter off. All right, so let's begin. All right, so just doing a quick check again, make sure manual override is off, throttles are at idle, propeller governor is at maximum RPM, condition lever is at cutoff, flaps are still currently down, we'll bring those up once we have hydraulic power. All right, so let the games begin. All right, so now ignition to the auto position and move the starter into the start position. And you can also monitor NG right here digitally as well if you don't want to look at the gauge. 
There's 13%. Going to low idle. Monitoring ITT. Nine hundred and seventy degrees. There's eight seventy, already below eight seventy, so we're good. NG coming up at forty seven percent. There's forty eight percent, fifty percent, going to high idle. Engine temperature's good, oil temperature's good. Start her off. Okay, at this point, auxiliary boost pump to the auto position. Clear the master warning and master caution. We want to make sure the fuel pressure light has been extinguished. That's this guy right here. Main gen is also extinguished. And I also like to verify auxiliary boost pump has truly switched off. This is a good indicator to get in the habit of checking in case you happen to forget to turn on your auxiliary boost pump. All right. Coming back up top for a second. Voltmeter. Make sure that we are charging at um, 26 plus volts. And you can see again on the amp meter we are charging, uh, indicating there as well. Moving down to the after start checklist, all gyro instruments turned on. Coming down to the main panel, make sure gyro suction is in the green. Slave selector is set to slave. ADI stabilizes. Let's move down to the de-icing test. Prop ice, good. Left windshield, good. Right windshield, good. And we're gonna check the airframe. Airframe is a little trickier. So you're gonna see the right boot is warming. And once that's done, we should see it switch over to the left. So on this one, you just have to sit, and there it is, it cycled between the two. And shut them down. Inertial separator can now come on. For those of you who don't know, what the inertial separator does is essentially protects the engine in case debris or anything down low is sucked into it, or in icing conditions such as thick clouds, heavy rain, precipitation, things like that, um, snow. Uh, these are all times that you would use the inertial separator, but it's definitely used while taxing and takeoff. And as long as skies are clear and safe, then you can shut it off. But anytime that you're into any condition in which something might get sucked into the engine, uh, inertial separator should be running. Obviously, that doesn't necessarily count for birds. You guys get the gist. All right. So, let's continue moving on. Amp meter, make sure it's below 50. It is indeed. Now we're going to switch the generator over to the standby position. Notice there's a slight drop in volts, nothing crazy. But volt meter, volt meter still above 26 volts. And amps still showing as charging. We can now come back to main. And we should get a master caution. We did indeed for switching over to the standby. We'll now bring our flaps back up. Flaps coming up. And let's come down to the environmental control panel. So on the environmental control panel, we're going to set bleed air to auto. Air conditioning set to on. Fan flow to auto. Set your cabin temperature. Remember, it does matter here. So we're looking at 22, 20 degrees. This is in Celsius, as you guys can see here. Air distribution should be set to normal. Again, dump is still guarded. All right. And you guys are actually going to watch this drop pretty quickly um, now that we have the AC actually turned on and running. It's pretty cool. It's like they really did a good job modeling all this. And finally, the weather radar, which is our MFD here, should be in off or standby as well. Okay. All right. So now coming down here, completing the rest of our electrical startup. We're going to turn our radio master on, our FS master on, so little switch right under here. Okay, let that power up, and then we'll do the FS self test. Even though it's running here, we're going to do the uh, test once again. While that's going, FS selector should be set on the left. There we go. Now we'll depress the test. Goes back into test mode again. Autopilot and trim system set to on. Let's go ahead and test the electric trim on the elevator. And down here you can see both the wheel rotating and the trim indicator. Okay. And as far as your trims, you want them either neutral or we can go ahead and go into the green position for takeoff. 
And I'm going to leave it right about there for now. Okay, let's keep on going. Your audio panels. I mean, first let's turn on our comms, so just enter there. Um, I actually wanted that down to there. Um, COM1 and COM2, so remember the top part here, these top rows, this is your audio panel. This is going to be what you are listening to, so we want to hear both COM1 and COM2. But down here, this is what you are transmitting on, so we only want to transmit on COM1. Simulating that we have received eight ATIS and ATC clearance, we're going to go ahead and hit B, set our barometric pressure, or you can use the barrow knob right here. This is just faster. There are certain ways, guys, that simulation comes to with a G. We'll also simulate a transponder code. 652. Notice it's an altitude reporting. We're going to set that to on for now until we get to the runway and ready for takeoff. All right. So that concludes the startup process for the TBM 850. So our next step here um, will be to uh, enter in our flight plan. Now, there's still two pieces left. We still have a uh, um, taxi lights, parking brake, and wheel brake check. I always turn our pedo, pedo heaters on when it's time, but we're not there yet. So let's go ahead and start working on our flight plan in the GNS 530. All right, so let's get rolling here. Now, my goal here with the TBM 850 guide is I will only be demonstrating the key features that are required for the GNS 530 to complete the flight. I will not be doing a full detailed guide inside the TBM 850 guide. I will be doing a GNS 530 full guide just like I did with the G1000, uh, but that will come at a later time. My first goal is to finish the TBM 850. Then I have another aircraft that I still can't tell you guys about yet that is already in the works. That'll be right around the corner as well. We've been very, very busy with guides this month, guys, I promise. Um, anyway, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started entering in our flight plan. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to flight plan. Now, from the flight plan screen, guys, the basics of the GNS 530 is the push cursor is always going to activate the window. The bottom, um, or excuse me, top rotary is always going to trigger the cursor, and the bottom will always change fields. Okay, that's how I like to remember it. But this is also why I recommend using the GN, or, uh, the working title. It's because you can click on this little keyboard here and that will actually allow you to use your keyboard for entry. And it makes it a lot easier. Now, if you have the Sim Builder or the uh, real Sim Gear GNS 530s, nothing beats using the real thing because it's just too much fun to actually be able to have it. But if you're using mouse, especially while you're trying to fly, it's just a pain in the butt. So let's go ahead and get onward here. And what we're going to do here is enter in our uh, destination or our departure and destination. So we are departing out of San Francisco. We're going to press enter. And then we're going to do the same thing here. Roll the top one. Trigger that. Trigger our keyboard. And we are heading over to Las Vegas. So, I mean, that's where a TBM 850 should go, right? <laughs> okay. And that's all we're doing right now for our departure. Now we're going to move over into our procedures. So our selecting our departure SID. Now you have two different ways to get to the procedure menu. You can either hit the procedure button right here, or the menu button is a context aware. It means it knows what screen we're in, knows we're in flight plan mode. So if we hit the menu button, it's going to bring us up a list of menu options that are only related to the flight plan. So we're obviously going to scroll down using that bottom rotary, select departure, select enter. Make sure the airport says KSFO. And we are coming out of the stick five. And again, using that uh, rotary, selecting enter. We are set to depart on uh, runway 01 left in the guide. So we're going to select 01 left. And our transition out of the SID is going to be Natel. So hit enter there. Everything looks good. I'm using the stick 5, runway 01 left. Natel is our uh, transition. Go ahead and hit enter. Boom. Easy peasy, right? Now. Let's go ahead and start entering in our route. Now, here's where things get a little bit trickier with the GNS 530. Unfortunately, the GNS 530 is unable to load airways. So what we essentially have to do is we have to take the airway um, information and uh, enter in each waypoint. Now, I'm going to bring up the guide here again to show you guys for just a second what that looks like so you know exactly what I'm talking about. So bear with me here. Uh, here we go. So let's go back to OBS for a second. Let me bring that window up. Boom. There it is. Okay. So here's what we got right here. 
okay? So here you can see this is the stick five, stick five. These are all waypoints part of the stick five. There's Natel. This is where we're going to leave the stick five, and we join the Quebec 174. Our first waypoint there is Cabal. <laughs> That's what I'm calling it anyway. Um, and so what we have to do is manually enter each one of these waypoints if we want to get as close to it. Now, I did this on purpose just to get practice entering waypoints into the uh, GNS 530. But you can see Q174, Q174, Q174. So all of these we need to enter in. Now, Fletcher, we wouldn't necessarily have to because it's actually our transition onto the Cocktail 3 coming into Vegas. But we're going to enter in in any way because I'm going to show you guys that it actually doesn't cause any problems. So let's go ahead and get back to the flight entry. So let me get back down to that page. I don't have them all memorized yet, which is shocking the number of times that I've done this over the last few days. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to hit that cursor, use that bottom rotary and scroll down. Now, how to insert a waypoint. Waypoints that are highlighted will always be pushed down with a new waypoint. So I want to put a new waypoint in after Natel, right? That's where our waypoint sequence begins, which means I want to highlight Las Vegas because, again, Las Vegas will be pushed down when I enter in a new waypoint. So highlighting Las Vegas, we're going to rotate the top rotary. That brings up the key entry, and now we can start typing in our waypoints. And again, I'm using the keyboard because it's faster. You guys can obviously use whatever method you enjoy the most. Notice you also see that this has changed to en route. Now, I want to show you guys something real quick. You guys can't see it right now, but Las Vegas is still highlighted. Okay, now I can scroll down here. Oops, and see, I don't want to do that. If I do this, if I start entering a waypoint right here, it's going to appear after Las Vegas. So we don't want to do this. I'm going to hit clear and clear, and I'm going to rotate back up. But after each waypoint is entered, Las Vegas will still be highlighted. I'm going to show you guys that on the next one here. So let's go ahead and rotate our knob, bring up our uh, key command. And the next one is Tango Tango Mike Sierra November. Press enter. Notice, there it is. So now you can see it's still highlighted. So all I'm going to do is rotate that top rotary again. And it's gone. And also verify your region in case you do a typo. It would be a good indicator. And like here, you can't see it, but it's still highlighted. So I'm just going to rotate that again. And this is going to be Fletcher. I think it's Fletcher. Okay, and then if we scroll down, we can see everything's in the correct sequence. Okay, so that's it. Now we're ready to set up our arrival, which is the Cocktail 3. So again, like we talked about from here, you can just hit Menu. We're going to go down to Arrival. Press enter. Now, here's where things get tricky if you're not careful. Look at the airport. It is showing San Francisco instead of Las Vegas like it should. So with this screen alive, what we're going to do is we're going to press that menu button again. All right. So let's hit menu. And there we go. And what we're going to look for is select the destination airport. Or you could do select next flight plan airport. Gosh, I can't talk today. So we're just going to go down to destination. Select enter. There we go, Las Vegas. And so again, same thing as before. Cocktail 3 is our arrival. Fletcher, there it is right there, is our transition onto the uh, star. Okay, runway, and we're going for 26 left. And load. And our final step here is our approach. So we're going to select enter. We're going to do the ILS 26 left. And we're going to be using Prino as our initial fix. Or transition, excuse me, not the initial fix. And we're going to hit load. We're not going to do activate, but load. The GPS guidance warning, just hit yes. If you get a message, just tells you what your course is, the next course that you need to set is. How about that. You want to scroll through it. Again, push to activate the cursor. Is there's all of our en route. Notice that even Fletcher was moved down to our transition onto the star. And there's our approach. And you have your initial approach fix. The initial fix, or initial approach, I should say. Initial fix. Final approach and missed approach. Alright, so 
We can also go back to flight plan. You can use your range. And the screen will automatically declutter the further you out you go. But you can also customize that even further, which we'll go over at a later time. And there it is. That is the completion of our flight plan. And that will complete tutorial one, the TBM 850 tutorial guide. Uh, if you guys are interested in supporting the project, please consider joining me on Patreon. The guide itself should release again, or will release again, not should, but will release in the next 48 hours. My goal is to have the final video done by tomorrow. Once the video is out and available and I can link it to the guide, the guide will go live on Patreon. So, as always, guys, thank you for the continued support, all the love and, and cool comments that I continue to receive on these. I really appreciate you guys more than you could ever know. You make so many things possible. And uh, stay safe and healthy, folks. I'll catch you in part two.